actually, we'll just jump into it. It's my topic now. Tim's dead, everybody. Mm-hmm. If you're just joining us, Tim that is That topic a ghost. is going to be headlined. Yeah. Tim Gettys is useless and dying. <laughs> that's, that's a good one. Yeah. All right, my topic is in the vein of this, and we're going to get to Arrow. But it's going to start with, I've broken up with Game of Thrones. When I broke up with Christine, I didn't realize it at the time. Breaking up left, right, I was center, breaking right? up with Game of Thrones, too, because she was the motivator. I watched Game of Thrones because she wanted to watch Game of Thrones. And I was always like, this is fine. But then the show would end, and she'd be like, ooh, that's different than the book. And I'm like, oh, what happened in the book? And she'd tell me what happened in the book. And I was like, what happens next? She's like, you'd you want be, me to ruin it? Like, no, no, it would be like, no, no, fucking Tyrannosaurus went and did this. And I'm like, which one's Tyrannosaurus? And she's like, it's this one. And I'm like, is he the small, the really big, I don't know, like, who are, the, this, is he the little person? Is he the one hanging out with the, the little girl? And like, no, and like, we went, it, eventually I just had the name, well, we're talking about Dinkle. Mm-hmm. We're talking about the guy with no dick. Dinklebot. Dinklebot. That's, mm-hmm. yeah, that's the only one I'm talking about, Destiny. Who's the kid that got pushed out of the window? Bran. Bran. I remember that because he's like Bran Flakes, and that always makes me giggle. Like, he keeps people <laughs> regular. Who's the big ogre guy? That's Hodor. Come on, Hodor. that's easy. Who's the, the guy that always is scheming? Littlefinger. No, he's the no dick guy. Oh no, there is that guy too. Oh, the other no. Who's the no dick guy? No dick guy yes. is the eunuch dude. The, he look. He looks like Lord he, he doesn't he's have like a penis, an, He's right? like an effeminate kingpin. That's Does how he, he's didn't he get his penis cut off or something? Yeah, yeah that's his no pee pee. Ferris. Who's the other guy that got his penis cut off? Oh, there's the unsullied. Golf. No, no, Gort. They renamed him Gort or whatever. What? That is true, but he's we're thinking about the guy. Don't have dicks. The Theon Greyjoy does not have a dick. Who's that's true. No, who's, no, who's, oh, who's, they don't got no dicks. the woman that likes the fire? Melisandre. Daenerys. But she, yeah, she can't get burned by fire. Daenerys can't get burned But I don't like the Daener- Daenerys. Are you talking about the Red Witch Lady? Yeah. Melisandre. Oh, she's so Daenerys hard. pissed me off a lot because it was so literally like Dutch. Khaleesi, Daenerys, Danny. There's all these names and people like you use them interchangeably. So I have no fucking idea. Well, for a while, I had no fucking idea who you're talking about. We're getting off track. Christine was the motivator to go watch this show. I was fine Who with it. Who is Khaleesi? She's Danny. No, Khaleesi is a title. She owns that title. I believe the full name is Danny Daenerys Khaleesi. Dra- Drago. Drago. Prego. 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 Is it hyphenated? Stormborn. Where's the hyphen go? Everywhere. <laughs> Every letter. <laughs> really long name. Uh, but I, uh, so I came around this season. It was time to, for Game of Thrones to come on. And I just never, ever was motivated or cared about watching. And then I, uh, every Sunday night, people are freaking out on Twitter. And with the Hodor stuff, no spoilers. I was like, "What? Ha- I, li- I liked Hodor fun. What happened to him? And I just went and read Geek and Sundry's recap. I was like, oh, that sounds interesting. But it took me three minutes to read it here rather than the 30 minutes to watch the show. That may or may not have naked people in it. In the show, though. But we got it, it, to be home. real careful it's about spoilers. Yeah, we're not going to spoil it. We're not going to spoil it. Just, I mean, you know, making sure everyone knows that. I can understand if you were to say you were going to break up. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming this is a larger issue for you. But breaking up with Game of Thrones last season, I could see. See, I think that's part of it is that I st- I stumbled along with last season. Yeah, last like, season was we, a on? lot of setup, and in my opinion, probably the worst season of all, of the entire show up to this point. This season, because they are sort of racing to the end now, a lot of stuff is moving a lot faster, and we're yeah. getting a lot of answers to things. So unlike, um, like they're not doing the thing that I hoped they wouldn't do, which is is the lost ending where they're like, oh shit, we have to scramble uh, and answer or answer a bunch of stuff very quickly. Now there's. They're not setting anything up anymore. Yeah. Now it's it's you know, with the exception of a, sm- a small characters here and there. But now that now it's sort of like let's let's start having definitive ends to what's going I on. I just here. feel like they burned it too. They took too long to get there. I just don't care. I got, I don't have it in me, and that's the problem. I respect that. Thank I you. don't. I don't understand this, Greg. I really don't. Like Game of Thrones to me is like on another level of I don't understand what we did as a species to deserve something so good. So well thought out. We support so fucking George engaging. Railroad Martin. It's it's crazy to Probably me. Like Jets the, fan. I was talking to Kevin about this this morning. Like the <laughs> the amount of characters on this show and the amount of phases right. and eras that we've seen and different families and different places in this world. Like when you look from season one to where we're at now, yeah. it's ridiculous. Like just even if you look at any single character and look at their their journeys, there was so few low points. And all of it makes sense enough that I'm like, holy shit. Like it's so well thought out. Mm-hmm. All of it. And it's like when you start talking about it, like, all right, there's 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 zombies and there's um Yeah, don't even get me started on the Iceman. But you bring in all oh, these like other from elements. Season one, they're coming. Oh, they're still coming. Oh, they're coming. Oh, we see one. They're coming. Fucking get there. They're coming, and that's Too the late. end. No, you had your chance. No, you had your chance, Iceman. The Iceman will come at the end, and that's the whole point. And I like that. It, it, they are giving us these little things throughout the seasons. There's so many characters and so many plots that are jumping back and forth, and you get all the like those the the buddy systems where it's like who the fuck thought Hounded Arya would be cool together? That they was were cool. Awesome, that was cool right? Yeah. And so you start seeing or Jamie and uh, Brienne, Brienne, like 
those those yeah, moments make it all worth it. And it's like like I was joking about earlier, like Jamie, who the fuck in season one would have thought they had to like and root for Jamie? Yeah. And now we're at a point where it's like you don't even know who to root for because you're kind of rooting for everyone, but you're also kind of against everybody. And I love it. I think that it's so it is just it's the level of detail and the attention that they give to everything. And um, it, from a c- cinematographer point of view, like I can't believe how crazy the shots are, especially this season, like the um, symbolism they use and the the way that they use the camera. I was telling Kevin, there's a shot in this episode that I don't, I'm not going to give character names or anything, but there's one character who's like walking and there's a lot of death around them. And then it cuts to another character walking with a lot of life around them, but they're dying. And it's like total flip of what we saw a couple seasons earlier. And I'm like, man, like the level of detail where they thought about that. And there's so much, nothing is there just because there's yeah. always a reason. I fucking love it. I respect that fine, but I'm, I don't, it's not in my life and I don't need it. And I, the, the, this goes back to arrow. Where I finally was just like, I didn't, I bailed halfway through last yeah. season of Arrow because it was so bad. And then I've only heard bad things about this one too. Did the dog just throw her own toy? <laughs> yeah. That's something Lola does, huh? <laughs> yep. That's awesome. Yep. That is awesome. She just plays with herself. That sounded weird. But I gave up on Arrow and didn't miss it this season. And then I tried it. I started Legends of Tomorrow and I was like, you know what? No, I'm good. No. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that's systemic of, of just an issue that network and cable television is having in general. Like HBO, I, I don't count as cable television. I count them as, some, as like a, per, a premium network. Um, they're giving you something different. And, and in this regard, I think Tim's right. Like it's, you should come back to it because I think you're going to see a story unfold at the end of all this. That is truly unique and awesome. And of a, such a scale that we probably won't ever see that again. Um, but then you go to things like arrow, you go to things like legend of tomorrow and they're just, they're just cookie cutter toward a certain degree. Like, you know sure. how they're going to go. They're very formulaic. They're very monster of the week. You're going to, you're not getting a very unique experience there because they just can't. They are pigeonholed to 23, you know, 12, between 12 and 23 episode yeah, seasons. Yeah. They have to do way too much with way too little. Um, with the exception of Flash, I just don't think there's much there for a lot of these shows. I haven't watched Supergirl, but I have to imagine it's probably kind of a variation on the theme. Yeah, uh-huh, yeah. It's just, there's just too much of it, right? And that's the other thing, that's too, the weird thing. we are aware of how much it is, and we are educated now. So we get bored very quickly when people don't deliver something new, but it's really hard to deliver something new because we've been watching tv on this planet now tv is not new anymore you know yeah and, and well that's the interesting thing when you talk about it you're talking about all these dc shows and even gotham which i never even gave a shot like i remember when smallville was on tv and it was so fucking amazing that there was a comic book tv show or whatever mm-hmm. and now there are so many of them that it's just like i i can finally pick and choose and i feel weird doing it because i feel like i should be watching everything but i just don't care about it you got it yeah but i mean i i I, I revel in that now where i'm like i had a bunch of stuff that i used to tape and or a dvr rather and uh I just get to a point where I'm like, am I just filling time with this? And that's the thing is like, I've always been the guy who wants to play games. I'm, I'm playing games as my entertainment. Mm-hmm. TV is really only there on the DVR for when I'm eating. So I can right. put something on and have it go because you can't do both. Which isn't very often these days. Twitter. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I even fear The Walking Dead. Like, Awful this season. Like, it's just a terrible start to that yeah, season. So many people it. on the Reddit have been like, no, come back. It gets better. I'm like, I don't have time for it to get better. I don't want this. It needs to be great out of mm-hmm. the gate. If I'm going to give any, if I'm going to pay any attention to this crap. And I just don't want to pay attention to this crap. So I'm not. And I thought that I would miss it, but I don't. Yeah. I only have my, I have my you know, I'm, I rest in peace, Nashville. I'm sure someone will pick it up and fix it. Uh, I hope someone picks it up. I want Real Walking Dead to come back, of course. It'll be back soon enough. Mm-hmm. And we'll be mad about the premieres. We were mad about the ending, I'm sure. Um, I watched the girlfriend experience at the urging of one Nick Scarpino and yeah. Damon Hatfield. What'd you think of that? It was, it was, it was interesting. It was different. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's the big thing about it. Probably why it's, I think you were the one who was talking about how fast the episodes go. Yeah. They totally do. I, you know, I watched two night and then would go to bed or whatever. It's like how I was winding down my evenings. Um, and yeah, it was fascinating because it was something completely different. It was yeah. this character who we're talking about rooting for. Right. And I was like, I don't like you. Yeah. I know you're not. You're not. Well, you're like a weird. Per- you are a sociopath. Yeah. You are correct yeah. in all this. And then it was like creepy because the actress played it so well yeah. that you're like, man, like, is she like this in real life? Yeah. <laughs> Portilla, come here. Is she like this in real life? Is she that weird? You know, I don't know what's going on. Da, 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 da. And so, yeah, that was different. But even at the ending of it was like super weird because it did the whole thing where it peaked and like, here's like the climax and her world's do, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I don't want to spoil yeah. every evil. And then it was like, and here's two more episodes of like, Life after that. Yeah. You're like, okay. And then it just ends like really awkwardly. But I'm, I'm like, I guess that's like the point, right? That her life yeah, is in an I awkward mean, That's way. That's what exa- exactly why I liked that show. Because it's everything is so 
similar now that when you find an experience like like the girlfriend experience where you have a show like that that it does not try to do the same uh well traveled road as every other show out there i i yearn for those kinds of experiences now yeah um and they are it is unsettling and it's not a show that you're going to walk away and be like huh i learned something but yeah right? no and, and that, that's totally fine and that's why it speak, stands out right. it's, it's the same thing i think what we look for in games where it's like you look for a game that breaks the mold or does something different or that yeah. you know i mean the reason fallout 4 doesn't resonate as much with us is because it's fallout 3 again and that's the same thing probably with like the reason season four of arrow season five of arrow whatever it isn't resonating the same ways because we've seen a million seasons of this. right well i think you know to nick's point i think so i watch game of thrones i think through I, can we spoil anything from a few years ago or is that not is that a, is that a full pocket i can tell you exactly a few where years I, ago i think you're, you're you're midway not even midway through season four I think yeah I, I, like I know when, where you when what's his name died J- joffrey was, yeah uh, that's where I, but I saw that episode i think i saw an episode after that and i stopped mm-hmm. there's no real reason for it it was just like i think it's like i think it's a great show i just um, I agree with Nick that like we're looking for something like maybe a little bit of hybrid of what Greg and Nick have both been saying, which is that I think we're looking for um, unique experiences, right? Like I love Lucy resonated so much with people and still resonates with people because it was really the first of its kind. And so mm-hmm. like it was like a unique kind of show or um, I think even though we shit on Lost, like Lost was so intriguing because there was really nothing quite like that. Right. Um, on television at the time, especially that was kind of in the, you know, we had the Internet in the early 2000s, the mid 2000s, obviously. But it was like really before we had VOD and all these kinds of things like that was an experience. Like people used to sit down and watch that. I was right. in college when I was lost. On. Yeah, I was like, I used to. Yeah, like we used to have like I used to go to my friend's. Um, almost every week and watch that show mm-hmm. live. It was like an event, you know, and yeah. uh, so I think that, you know, to me, there's only a few shows I've watched in the last few years that I like have had any resonance with me at all. I was really sad when Mad Men was over because I think mm-hmm. Mad Men's one of the great shows of all time. I think that's like a fucking unquestioned, beautiful show, perfect, almost a little problem. But even the last season was fucking awesome, symbolic. I love that we talked about it, you know, at a, at a, you know, extensively. Even shows that are a little pulpy and and not like great, like Jericho, I really loved because again, it was unique and like that was a, 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 a I love the idea of the United States ending and getting nuked, bombed and all right. this kind of stuff and like what is that like. Um, there were shows that have come and gone that, you know, were, were uh, that, you know, come back every year, like House of Cards that, you know, is going to be really good. I've saw, said time, time again, I think Man in the High Castle is a fucking fantastic show. Um, but like there's only so much time for this. So when when Game of Thrones stopped speaking to me on on the level of speaking to me, say, in the first two seasons, um, I was like, well, I, I don't, I'm not really married to the show. And I used to watch it by myself. So it was like it's not I'm not really enjoying it with anyone. I did have those moments, those rousing moments of, you know, the, the last episode of the first season um, was a fucking amazing episode. And I, the one thing I really like about Game of Thrones that I think I, I respect more than anything is that it's not fan servicey at all. Like they like obviously a lot of it's already been written. Yeah. Um, but nothing sacred. And I think that there aren't a lot of shows like that where they're like, fuck you. Like we're killing this character. Now we're killing this character. Now we're killing this character. You like this guy. He's dead. We're going to gruesomely murder this person Mm -hmm. or this person is just going to disappear. This person becomes bad or this person becomes good. I'm like, that's pretty cool. Like that's, I think the one thing I respect most about Game of Thrones is that it has no respect whatsoever for the end, the end user. It's just like, this is the story. And you see things getting circulated on Twitter and on Facebook all the time. People getting upset when this happens or this person's dead or whatever. And, and, and it's like a big middle finger to them. And I'm like, that's awesome. It's like, cause you're still going to watch it. And yeah. we, know, we want you to get attached to these characters. So you feel something it's, it's, it's a, as opposed to like, but see that's the Sopranos where like, to, we knew Tony Soprano was probably going to die eventually. And I think he did die in the last episode. We don't really know one way or the other, but mm-hmm. you're not going to kill Tony Soprano in the second season of the Sopranos, no. you know, like, but not this if you one, they're just six like, seasons or eight seasons. Yeah. Or how long it went. And I love that. So I'm like, the, the show is just about different people now. Or like there's like one or two people, but you thought it was really about this person, but it's not about that person because he's fucking dead. Right. And now you think all those guys. And I was like, I really like that. But it is labyrinthine storytelling to the max. And like, it's one of those things that I don't think is accessible to a lot of people. I think a lot of people, I really do believe a lot of people watch Game of Thrones. And I think I was one of them that has has in a very literal way lost the plot. I think that people just like watch it because it's it's part of the zeitgeist. That'll be kind of thing. that's yeah. why it'll be interesting to see when it gets to the end and it is all right. This is the final season. How many people catch up? Will I catch up? Will I do? Because that's what I did with them. Well, when Breaking Bad had announced its end, but like it was still like two seasons out. I finally one week and gave it a chance and just marathon binge watched. I think it was four seasons and then watched the fifth one on demand because it was going on live or whatever. And it was like that was a great way for me to get into it mm-hmm. rather than try to keep up. It's like comics, right? When you're trying to keep yeah. up month to month and come back from breaks and try to figure out what the hell's going on, who these people are. Anymore. Well, Breaking Bad specifically was like anything that has 
that takes those big breaks with uh, or hiatus, those mid season breaks they started doing to kind of to, yeah. to break up. Those were terrible. Yeah. Cause they really do break up the, the sort of emotional uh, uh, involvement that you have in the show. And that's why I think, you know, what Colin was talking about, he me- he mentions in man in the high castle. He talks about house of cards. Like, yeah, yep. Those are awesome experiences. You know, daredevil season one for me was an awesome experience. <clears throat> yeah. Jessica Jones was an awesome experience. Girlfriend experience was an awesome experience because I got to sit there and just, blaze through them on my timetable and not get lost and be really into it and know everybody's motivations from episode to episode day to day that I was watching it and then be done with it. Yeah. And there's like, there's a, there's a certain magic to that, right? There's a certain, like y- you get immersed in the world and you have there's is for the girlfriend experience specifically. There is a tension to that show that grows subtly and slowly that you're aware of from the very first frame. And then by the time that that comes to a head, you're with her in that. Right. Yeah. And, and it reflects it's hard to describe because, it, you know, what you're talking about is how you're like, I don't like this character. But, you know, in any good storytelling, obviously, like you see yourself or, or parts of yourself reflected in the main character. Right. That's why we yeah. sort of, we you know, sympathize with them or we're on that journey with them. Right. And so with that experience, you're like, God, this is so well done because I can understand why she's doing this. And I see this, the part of myself that you know, would do something like that. And, and oh, not, not, you know, to that degree, but I know you like sex and up, money, Nick, you know, but. spoilers. I don't know if too many people are going to watch it, but like, you should idea, watch it. You can get it. You can get your free won't, trial won't spoil on it. Amazon. But the idea behind it is that she is a, uh, a high class escort, right? But she also has a law career and you can, you tell very early on that she really likes being an escort. And then it deals with sort of the taboos behind that, right? Her family is like, why are you doing this? And, and then she finally is, you, you can't, she never really says it outwardly, but you get the idea that you're like, she just really likes this. And this that, is, a, she this says is something that she really likes. Yeah. And why am I, and then you're sitting there judging her, right? You're looking at her going like, why well, she shouldn't like that. This is illegal and immoral or whatever. But well, then, I didn't, I, the only thing I judge her for was the dead eyes all the time. The robot, like, you know what I mean? Like, I, and I don't mean, I, in, I don't mean in like the sex. I just mean how right. cold she was general from her law degree. See, I love that. And then she got to turn on the character right. as the escort. Yeah, yeah. And then, and so, so that to me, so going back to my point, when you hit those, that point where that character finally realizes that there's a power in that, and that is awesome storytelling. What w- the danger becomes when you, as the audience, you get that sense whether it's you're, you're aware of it or not, that they're stringing you along because they just want to keep creating seasons of the show. Sure. That's what happened with Lost, and that's what pissed me off yeah, about yeah. that show. Because yeah, I will too. say, the first two seasons of Lost they're excellent. are the best two seasons of television ever made. Yeah, they're, I mean, the, I, followed they're, by they're, the third season where you're like, what the, the third f- season was what the fuck? Awful. The third season was, aw- I remember coming back for the third season, this sucks. And because so, when you go into the hatch, like the first episode of the second season was like, when like. They blew your mind. You it, thought like, you're time with, traveling. With, yeah, with Desmond, and like, and it starts with him like cooking or something. Yeah, and, like, yeah. and I'm like, this is fucking awesome. And the numbers and all that. the record. Yeah, yeah, like, so I was like obsessed with the numbers. It was like really sad. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, like there are shows, contemporary shows that, or shows that have just recently ended that I think are good. Uh, The Good Wife's a really great show, but sure. but it's but it's, it's it's procedural meets um, it's really procedural meets serial. So I think that it's like <laughs> easier to follow. Like, you don't really have to watch it in order. Um, it like should. S- uh, SVU works so well. You yeah, just it, pop it, in anywhere you want. What, yeah. what, what are you up to, Benson? Show me. And I I think that um there are shows that people have recommended to me that I really want to watch. Mr. Robot apparently is supposed to be excellent, and yeah. that's like one of the, the shows that I really want to watch. But you know, it comes back to me where I, I I've been watching the Americans. Like the, I watched almost mm-hmm. the first the whole first season. I'm like, this show just isn't good. Yeah. And like and it's and it's and I'm like I just I want to like what a great fucking idea. Deep deep cover. Deep for cover people that don't know what it's Soviets. all about, deep cover Soviets that are like so deep covered that. They're like trained in the Soviet Union in the 60s to become totally American and they come to the United States in the 70s and they're just a totally American family. Like they have American kids and like they they don't ever speak Russian. They don't like ever talk. It's like really, great really. Cast it's a, yeah, it's a really great idea. And I'm like, but this show just sucks. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't have time. To like everyone's like it gets better in the second and third yeah, season. Like no, I don't no, have no. time for this. Like, That's that game video t- game bullshit. of it yeah. gets better at twenty hours, it's in. like, like it, no. It's like I don't want to invest that much. There's too many other things that I want to do and other other things that I want to watch. And so I agree with you. Like I want to get back to Game of Thrones because I know it's good. It's one of those shows my fucking father like loves. He's like obsessed with Game of Thrones. And when I know he gives things time, like The Walking Dead's another one where he's yeah. like, you got to get back into The Walking Dead. I'm like, you're telling me that. Um, you do. Yeah. So <laughs> those are different things, though. I mean, I recently got into Walking Dead, where I started watching Game of Thrones at right when season three started. So I binge watched one and two. I've been watching every Sunday that they released since season three. Walking Dead. Recently, I just binge watched all of them and caught the latest season live sure. as it happened. And like they're they're different shows. Walking Dead really is based just on those wow moments, and it is on the character dying and that the shock of that, whatever. But uh, Game of Thrones, it's like it's those death moments are just the. And it's not always death, but usually it is. Um, they, they're they more just the tentpole moments that, you know, kind of like 
catch your your attention and stuff, but like all the other shit that happens in between really matters and really builds. And I think that what you were talking about of having the the binge watching thing and just like mm -hmm. how things are moving towards that, I think the Game of Thrones respects the the artistry of the the cliffhanger and of leaving you thinking about the show in a way that most shows that I watch do not do. Like Walking Dead, like they'll have their cliffhangers and stuff, but like most people feel really gypped from how they handled the the last well that because you know, that was so not them exactly the right and usually they're they're pretty good but this season also they had the whole Glenn thing and there was a whole bunch of things they yeah, did yeah. that were questionable whereas Game of Thrones when it does stuff like I feel like you are missing out on Game of Thrones if you are not either binge watching it right. or watching week to week and I think that that it's a big thing because every week it is appointment viewing and it is something where all of my friends have plans around that show yeah. they're all watching it together I every week text Kevin where are you watching the show. How are we doing this? The next and he morning, says, oh, my neck. we'll talk about it, you know, and the, it's discussing like, where do you think the plot's going? And I think that the the creators of the show specifically, the, the producers of the show are so good at understanding the the nature of fandom nowadays. And there's all these articles now about what fans demand and expect from mm -hmm. from all these forms of media. And I think that the creators of Game of Thrones know that and work around that in a really fun, unique way where we are questioning what's going to happen. And there's three more episodes this season. And we're trying to roadmap because that's how people engage with content now is you're trying to get ahead of it. You're always trying to get ahead of it. And them trying to come up with ways to surprise us is the that's where the fun comes and mm. not knowing like having your theories. And there's a, a, a unique payoff to having your theories be right. And there's also something to being surprised. And I think Game of Thrones it needed last season to build that. And it like, it's not the oh Game of Thrones gets good three seasons in it's Game of Thrones needed a lull season five sure. to build up so that they can now they're past the books rapid fire. We're setting up the end game. I, I feel like I'm with you and I, that's why I think it'll be a different, I think it's a different uh, uh, opinion or lens when you binge watch it, binge watch, because that was the, what I always felt with walking dead season two, where we, so many people left like, this is boring. Get out of the fucking woods. And I was like, why are we taking so long in the woods? Fuck Sophia. What is going on? But that was because it was stretched out in our real time yeah, lives. See, Whereas I've when you watch that, when you binge watch, I remember you, you're the one who came okay, back. I to love me. that season. And you, no, you I, came I, back I hate it. it. I, I binge watched it. Yeah, I still yeah. hated it. Oh yeah, it was I so it was, slow I it was and awesome, awesome. And th but that's the thing to be like. Those two shows have a lot of similarities, right? They're all these big epic, uh, these these epics that have multiple characters and multiple storylines happening, um, and you get invested in it, and, and they they sort of evolve and flow. Um, that's sort of where they end as far as the similarities because to me Walking Dead has been three or four different shows already whereas Game of Thrones is just an epic tale sure. that you can tell comes from amazing books and I'm not saying one's better than the other I love Game of Thrones but season one and season five I'm sorry um, uh, Walking, Walking Dead. Dead season one and last season was it season five Last yeah, season four, I'm bad at that. No, it's it's more than four, it's I would think. No, yeah. Whichever six, last season was, six, just radically done, yeah. different seasons, radically different characters, totally different shows sure. at this point, right? But that's fucking awesome. And it's kind of the point. It is the point. Yeah, yeah. But that's that's the problem is, you know, and this kind of goes down into the minutia of what a fan is and whether or not we have the right to to sort of dictate what that content is really going to mean. Because I find that my reaction to shows that are outside of the norm goes like this. What is this shit? I don't like it. It's not what I normally expect. And then, oh, wait, maybe this is something cool that's not, oh, I'm addicted to this. It was the same with House of Cards. It was the same with Game of, Game of Thrones. I watched the first couple episodes. I was like, I don't know if I'm going to get into this. Then by like three or four, I'm like, oh, this is something. I see what this is now. I don't even know what to expect. This is amazing. Same with Walking Dead. It took me, yeah. it took me three years to get into that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the, yeah that, that's the thing with Walking Dead, which is, I think, difficult for me because I realize that, I realize that there's a bit of, I'm in my own mental conundrum with television where I'm like, I, I don't like The Walking Dead because it doesn't tell a lore-based story. But then I fell in love with a show like Down Abbey that is nothing but character driven, like has no reason to exist other than the fact that it's just telling character stories as no, as a social commentary. But sure. it doesn't it doesn't matter. Like, and right. so I'm like, well, that, that's contradict that's a co total contradiction. But I think it's because with something that's more sci fi or just walking that's not really sci fi, but something that's like f fantastic. Um, it's like you're looking for a reason for it to exist other than the reason. And, and so The Walking Dead for me was like, I'm tired of this. I'm like, I don't even give a fuck like about any of these characters. The world is what's interesting and they refuse to talk about it. You know, yeah. and, and and that was like one of the things where I'm like, like, so who gives a fuck about any of these people? What happened? You know, like, does anyone give a fuck? Like, I'm not, I just want to like sh go around shakes people sometimes and be like, you almost touched on it at the end of season one and then you walked away from it forever. Which was like the worst part of the entire show. I, right? I liked it when they were going to the CDC and I was like, I thought it was awesome. Yeah, me too. I was Ugh. like, holy shit, like what happened? What happened? What happened? What happened? It was a massive And then I'm like, oh, never mind. 
And then yeah. they just and they just left over and then they go to a farm for like 17 years and then they go to like other things. And I'm like, all right, this is fucking boring. But I also realized that I probably should go back and watch it again because I think that there's a contradiction there with some of the other character driven stories that I like. In other words, it's saying that that it's not right or wrong. It's that I've been looking at sh- I've been looking at shows through the lens of Lost and Jericho when it's those kinds of shows where it's like these characters are fine, but like what happened? That's what's interesting. Right, That's right, all I right. care about. Um, meanwhile, there's shows like Mad Men that are all about one person and it's all story driven or shows that I really hold in a high regard. Like Sopranos is really not even about the story. It's about it's about Tony Soprano. Yeah, so, it's about the people. Um, it's about Don Draper. Yeah, exactly. So so to me, I, I'm just looking for those different kinds of experiences, but. When the, the the thing that's I, I I get afraid of going into new shows and kind of dedicating time to them is is what I call the Breaking Bad effect, which was I'm always looking for something new and something fun to watch and and something to enjoy my time with. But then I'm always afraid that I'm going to hate this thing that like everyone seems to like. And that's I think Breaking problem, Bad, I think right? Breaking Bad was trash. Really? Like I, I hated that's that show. Right, we talked about this. and and like the first season's excellent, excellent. I love the first season, and then it's just like. Who are you rooting for? What is the like? Why are you doing this? Why are you being like this? None of this makes any sense. Right. I forced myself to the end of it. And at the end, I was like, that was such a waste of time. I would have rather just thought that I never watched this great show, <laughs> you know, and like, and oh, I could always watch this great show, but I never get to it as opposed to like, yeah. so I'm always a little bit afraid that I'm going to be a little bit out of the mainstream, which is why I'm trying to identify a few shows that I want to watch. Mr. Robot is the one that people have been like begging me to watch. And I do. And it sounds awesome. It's about a guy that's like sabotaging a corporation, basically, I think financially. And it's um, the guy from Until Dawn. It is the guy. Yeah. The guy from Until Dawn. So um, I don't know. I just think that like t- Oh, watching yeah. television is a selective kind of is watching a selective kind of is a selective kind of thing for me, and I just wish, um, thematically that I was getting more of what I wanted. That's why I think Man in the High Castle is so cool. But what I really loved thematically the most again was Jericho, and I wish that we would get back into something like that was so like post America that it's like really fun for for me to watch or whatever and more lore driven. But it didn't seem like anyone really liked that except for me. So, do you um no. do you watch Veep? Yeah, I watched I watched the like most of the first season of Veep. Okay. It's great. It's a comedy though. Like the, like comedies are easy. Comedies are easy to get into. Like I still go back and watch The Office constantly, or yeah. um, like when I'm just eating food or whatever I'm, I'm watching. And there's like great documentary type series. Like I, I've been recommending The Circus, which is fucking awesome. Um, but uh, which I think is on Showtime. Um, and the show that I've been falling in love with recently that I've been mentioned many times now is, is The Path, which is fucking rad. It's a really great show. It's on Hulu. It's about a cult in upstate New York, and it's it's. It's fiction. Mm-hmm. Uh, Aaron Paul is the Aaron main Paul's, character, yeah. um, and it's really cool because it's about this like fucked up cult and like people that are trying to get out of it and people that are trying to get in it and all this kind of stuff. And it's like I'm like cool, so interesting subject matter, mm-hmm. but this seems to marry this the this character driven shit with the lore driven shit, which is what I like the most. Yeah, I don't know, we'll see where it goes. Hopefully, it's good. Hopefully, it's not a a lost situation where I had to like call my family five years later and apologize to all of them for getting them into lost. I'm like, I know it's a whole waste. I'm sorry. Like I begged you to watch the show and you fell in love with it and you hate yourself now too. I'm sorry. So to summarize, Game of Thrones sucks. Bring back Nashville. This topic was brought to you by Harry's. A Harry shaving set will make the perfect Father's Day gift. It looks cool. It feels special. And it's something that dad will actually use. Dads can be impossible to shop for, Nick. I know. Oh shit, Father's Day is coming up. Yeah, it's it hard. And my dad's <laughs> birthday is around the corner too. You don't want to get another tie or pair of socks he's never going to wear, but you also don't want to get something really practical that doesn't feel special enough to be a gift. Thankfully, Harry's has have Harry's has you covered. While supplies last, last Harry's is offering a special limited edition shave set for Father's Day. Get one for dad and get one for yourself too. The limited edition Father's Day shave set includes a matte black razor handle, a chrome razor stand, Harry's moisturizing foaming shave gel, three of Harry's handcrafted blade cartridges, and a travel cover, all for $40. Plus, it comes in a sleek, giftable box with the option to add custom engraving and a personalized card. Harry's also offers shaving sets at different price points starting at $15. Get one for yourself. Go to harrys.com right now and redeem this special offer code for fans of the show. Harry's will give you $5 off your first purchase with the promo code KINDAFUNNY. Don't wait. Economy shipping for Father's Day ends on Thursday, June 9th. So act now. That's Harry's, H-A-R-R-Y-S dot com. Enter the code kind of funny at checkout to get $5 off. Get dad something he'll actually use for Father's Day.